Hello and welcome to this video. So in this video, we'll be talking about matrix multiplication. So earlier, we talked about matrix addition and multiplying an entire matrix by a particular scalar. So you might be tempted to think that given a matrix and another matrix, to multiply matrices, we just have to multiply the corresponding entries. So for example, if I give you 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 6, 7, 8, you might be tempted to think that the entries are just going to be 5, 12, 21, and 32, which you get by multiplying these two entries. But this is not true. To multiply matrices, you don't just multiply the corresponding entries. Now, why is that? Well, this part is going to take a bit of time to explain, so let's go ahead and talk about some theory of matrices. Now, a matrix is essentially just a representation of a linear system. So, we actually talked about this back when we talked about Rudy's rho echelon form and rho echelon form. But if I give you a system of equations, like the one I'm drawing right, writing right here, we can write this linear system of equations as a matrix. In this case, you'll have an augmented matrix, like so. So matrix is essentially a very compact way of representing a linear system. So let's just kind of use this idea to, diff to talk about matrix multiplication for a second. So before we can do that, let's talk about the idea of standard coordinates. So suppose we have a particular axis right here, and we denote this vector as i hat, and we denote this vector as j hat. Now, from basic coordinate geometry, this is just a, this is known as a standard basis vector, or sometimes it's known as a unit vector. And i hat would just be one comma zero, and j hat would be zero comma one. So those would be the coordinates of i hat and j hat. Now, suppose I have some vector v which is equal to x and y, like so. So graphically, if I want to plot this on an axis, well, what do I do? So let's just draw an axis, like so. Okay, so in order to plot this vector on an axis, what would I do? Well, I would multiply x with i hat, and I would multiply y with j hat, and then that would be whatever vector I get right here. So this right there would be by v. This would be by yj, and this would be xi. So essentially, to represent a vector using i hat and j hat, I just multiply the corresponding coordinates with those particular points. Now, let's just kind of conceptualize this a little bit more. So, suppose we start with our original kind of coordinate system. So, we have 0, 1 and 1, 0. So, let me just put this down here for a second. And suppose we just kind of scale these two things. So, suppose I scale the y coordinates by 3 and the x coordinates by 2. So, what does that look like? So, visually, this looks something like this. So, 0, 1 instead of that. So, I'm just going to draw these with a different color. So, what's really going on? If I scale the i by 2, well, that's going to become 2, 0. And if I scale the y by 3, well, let's just represent it with a green vector. So that's going to become 3, 0. So in a matrix, what really happened? So let's just kind of investigate this a little bit for a second. So what really happened here? Well, I transformed my vectors, which are originally written as 1, 0, and 0, 1, which are these coordinates right there, which you can write as entries in a matrix, because remember, a matrix is just a representation of a linear system, which which in this case are just the coordinates of this point. And this became 2, 0, 0, 3. So what this matrix is really saying is that 
the overall effect of applying this transformation to the standard basis vectors or 1, 0, and 0, 1 can be captured use, using this matrix. So the information that I use to transform this, this set of coordinates can be captured in one go using this particular matrix. Okay, well, why is this, you know, useful? Suppose we have an arbitrary vector. So let V be equal to some arbitrary vector x comma y. And I promise this will all make sense at the very end when we talk about multiplication. Well, if I give you an arbitrary vector x comma y, what's really going on? Well, this is 0, 1. And this is 1 comma 0. So, and suppose we give you x and y. So x and y would be some vector right here, for example. So if I wanted to kind of apply this stretching horizontally by 2 and stretching vertically by 3 kind of condition, what am I doing? Well, I have to first stretch the x coordinates by 2, and then I got to stretch the y coordinates by 3. So if I take the coordinates of x and y, like so, what am I really doing? First, I stretch the x coordinates by 2. So first, I stretch the x coordinates by 2, like so. I don't touch the y coordinates, so I leave that alone. So I don't stretch the y coordinates anyway, so that stays as, as is. And then I stretch the y coordinates by 3. So the x coordinates stay as is, and the y coordinates become 0 and 3. So paradoxically, I read this from right to left instead of left to right. So I first stretch x by 2, and then I stretch y by 3. So I read this from right to left, so going this way. So I take the x and y coordinates, stretch it by 2, and then stretch the y coordinates by 3. Very interesting. So doing this the long way, in order to stretch the x coordinates first and then the y coordinates, should theoretically be equal to doing it all at once using the combined matrix that I wrote right here. I think it's pretty intuitive at this point to kind of say that, well, multiplying these two matrices should theoretically give you that. And this isn't too hard of a stretch. So in theory, multiplying these two matrices, like so, should in theory give you 2, 0, and 0, 3. Hmm. That's interesting. How does that, you know, work? So let's just kind of investigate this a little bit more. So we remember, once again, we started with the standard kind of coordinate systems. So we started with 1, 0, and then 0, 1. So stretching in the x-axis, in which we stretch in this direction, that becomes 2, comma 0. So what do we do? So the x-axis, well, we took the original vectors and made it 2, 0, 0, 1. Okay, so let's just kind of investigate this kind of matrix product right here. Okay, what's really going on here? Well, one way you could kind of interpret this is the following. We stretch each of these coordinates using, uh, using these set of coordinate systems. And then we apply this matrix to this kind of transformation. Notice I say apply. So basically, after we transformed the set of coordinates using this matrix, we're going to transform the set of y coordinates using this matrix. So this describes a transformation of sorts. And in later parts of linear algebra, this will be known as a linear transformation. But I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, so I'm not going to go too far into that. But essentially, the idea is that transformations in space can be captured using matrices. So the idea is that first, I uh, use this matrix to transform my x coordinates. I can use this matrix to transform my y coordinates. So what's really going on here? Well, I have 1, 0, 0, 3. And then if I want to transform these coordinates into what happens with this transformation, well, I would have to multiply each of the vectors by the new coordinate systems. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, remember earlier, 
I mentioned that transforming a set of coordinates using the coordinates in a plane is just the same thing as multiplying each of the coordinates as a linear combination. So in other words, I can rewrite this thing as 2 times 1 comma 0 plus 0 times 0 comma 3. Well, if you go in and do that, you'll get 2 comma 0. But this is very interesting because 2 comma 0 is this kind of entry right there. Hmm. Okay, what if we did the very similar thing but with the other kind of points? So 0, 1. Well, in this case, what's going to happen is the following. So we'll get 1, 0, 0, 3, and then 0, 1. Well, what is this going to be equal to? So this is going to be equal to 1, 0, or more, more appropriately, 0 times 1, 0, plus 1 times 0, 3. But then 0 times anything is a 0, and then we'll with this coordinate. So we get 0 and 3. That's very interesting because, that, once again, that's this column right there. So, once again, if you just kind of combine both of these together, we'll get the original matrix in question. So, this is one way to think about matrix multiplication in the sense that we are essentially transforming transformation, we're essentially re representing transformations in space using matrices and writing the combinations as a linear combination of the vectors in order to figure out, well, what's really going on here. Okay, so how does this, you know, conceptually look like? We can actually generalize this a little bit more. So generally, if I give you the vectors A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, H, well, what does that mean? Well, if you go ahead and do the same thing as before, we'll get the following. So we'll get A, B, C, D times E, G. But if you go ahead and do the same thing, well, what's this going to give us? Well, that's going to give us A times E plus B times G using the same kind of logic as before. And then we'll get C times E plus D times G. So that's going to be the same thing as we did right here, where we multiply each of the coordinates by the corresponding elements. So just to be very clear, this is going to be E times E times C, like so. And then this is going to be G times BD, like so. And that's exactly what we have here. Very interesting. So if you do a very similar thing with the other set of coordinates, so we get A, B, C, D, times F, H. Well, we'll get a very similar kind of result. We'll get A, F, plus B, H, and then C, F, plus D, H. So what does this tell us? This means that we can write matrix multiplication as the following. So A, B, C, D times E F G H. So this means that if we kind of combine those two things, we get A E plus B G. Just gonna make sure that's okay. Yep. And then we get C E plus D G. So and then we get A F plus B H and then C F plus D H. And this is how we do the matrix multiplication in general. So what are we doing really? We're taking the rows and multiplying by the columns. And then we do the same thing. We will take the rows and multiply by the column. So that gives us the first kind of set of entries right there. And we do a very similar kind of operation with the second one. We take the rows and multiply by the columns. That gives us this thing. We take the rows and multiply by the columns. That gives us this kind of entry right there. Very interesting. So this is one way to think about how matrix multiplication works. So we could either take linear combinations of the two matrices, which is what we did right there, or we could multiply the rows and columns and get the same thing. When I say multiply, I really just mean anything the dot product between the rows and the columns. As we can see, it's the same thing. So another natural question to ask is, is A times B equals to B times A? So is matrix multiplication commutative? Well, no, and the reason for that 
is because applying transformations in a different order will give us a different result. So, for example, if I first stretched by 3 and then stretched by 2, that will give us a very different result but, uh, for stretching by 2 and then stretching by 3. So, matrix multiplication is actually not commutative. So, in general, A times B does not equal B times A. Okay, so aside from that kind of subtlety, matrix multiplication can be defined in this way. So hopefully this video kind of helped you see the intuition behind how matrix multiplication worked. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to answer. But otherwise, if this video helped you, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I would really appreciate it. Thank you all so much and have a great day. We'll be doing examples of this thing in the next video. So see you then.